Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So I'll put you the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Sefa, and today we're investigating normality tests for the residuals in EBUs 12. We have got a simple data set recording inflation and unemployment in the UK over a 168 year period. And the equation in question that we'll use to estimate um, our residuals and then check for their normality would be inflation regress on unemployment and lagged inflation. Again, the adaptive expectations form of the Phillips curve. That generates the equation and we can quite easily go for residual diagnostics and normality test that would apply a Harke Barra test for the residuals as well as showcasing the histogram of the residuals to visualize their distribution so we can expand it and um, see the results a little bit more closely. We can see the skewness and courtesies of the residuals. Uh, again, uh, it signifies that the distribution of residuals is left skewed. The left tail is a little bit fatter than the right tail, given skewness is negative. And courtesies here, uh, bear in mind, EVUs records uh, courtesies, not access courtesies. So uh, courtesies value of eight would correspond to access courtesies of five, uh, shows that the uh, distribution is um, quite a bit more heavy tailed than the normality assumption would suggest. These are further integrated into the Harke Barra statistic, which is chi squared distributed with two degrees of freedom. And the p value is given here as probability. We see that this probability is statistically indistinguishable from zero. So the null hypothesis of normality for the Harke Barra test can be quite comfortably rejected, and residuals are not normal. This is not per se a violation of Euler's assumptions, as uh, Gauss Markov theorem has been reformulated by Markov. Uh, for uh, non-normal cases, so it doesn't mean that our coefficients are unreliable. However, it means that the uh, OLS estimators are different from maximum likelihood estimators, if we were to use an optimal probability density function there. So this is something to keep in mind. However, this is not the only normality test that EVUS allows you to efficiently undertake. If we go to the residual series, that would uh, automatically uh, reflect the residuals from the most recently estimated uh, model. So that would be the first regression model we've done. And we can go view and go to descriptive statistics and tests. First of all, histogram and stats would produce exactly the same um, picture as the normality test uh, we referred to previously. So you could refer to it this way. But what's uh, even more important is that we can go for empirical distribution tests. And here we can select the distribution. By default, we're testing for normality, so it selects normal distribution. Uh, the parameters will be uh, taken to um, be estimated using maximum likelihood. However, we can also pre-impose the parameters here. And again, we'll first run it um, with, with maximum likelihood and then we'll impose them based on our regression model output. And then we can also specify our estimation options. Uh, again, as uh, most of the tests that will be presented uh, use some uh, level of numerical uh, optimization, we need to specify the iteration and the convergence precision, but it's uh, uh, most of the time uh, prudent to leave them as default and only increase the number of iterations, for example, if uh, the model does not converge in the given number of iterations. So as we uh, click OK, we can see that um, we have got our normality test um, implementation. We have got four quite common uh, normality tests here, um, including Lilliforce, Kramer and Mises, Watson and Anderson Darling. And all of the p-values, all the probabilities are very small. Again, uh, not even one significant digit is different from zero, meaning that they're statistically indistinguishable from zero. And uh, the normality assumption, which is the null hypothesis, can be uh, quite conveniently rejected. And here we have got maximum likelihood estimates of the uh, location parameter and the scale parameter for the distribution of residuals. We can see quite um, naturally that the mean uh, is uh, zero. Again, this is a very small number, uh, which is, again, reassuring, meaning that we have converged to mean zero of residuals. And uh, this is the maximum likelihood estimate of the standard error. 
Uh, however, we can also have a look at uh, what can we do by imposing the uh, mean zero and uh, volatility equal to the standard of regression into this um, framework. So we can go to empirical distribution tests and impose mean zero, as that's what we require residuals to be on average, and standard error equal to 3.605849, given by the standard error of regression in the regression equation we estimated. And that allows us to go for a wider range of tests. Some of them uh, do not require numerical uh, optimization. We can see uh, the Kolmogorov-Smirnov test for uh, both deviations. We can see the Kolmogorov-Smirnov tests for positive and negative deviations. Again, if you're interested in the uh, left tail or right tail of the distribution in particular. And we can see the Kuiper test, which uh, integrates both the uh, upside and the downside uh, deviation of the empirical distribution function from the theoretical distribution function. Uh, and we can see the other three tests, which are Kramer von Mises, Watson, and Anderson Darling applied as well. And they all show uh, rejections of the null hypothesis of normality. However, the p-values here are uh, quite a bit higher, meaning that um, imposing the parameters does produce a qualitatively different result. However, all of those p-values are still below 5%, meaning that the normality assumption is violated. However, when undertaking OLS regression modeling, the normality assumption is not a must. Your uh, coefficients are not biased or your standard errors are not inefficient because of your uh, residual distribution being non-normal. It is just that maximum likelihood approach will give you different results. So you might be uh, tempted, if you have got a result like that, to also estimate your model using maximum likelihood in uh, one form or the other, for example, robust list squares, which are readily available on eViews. However, it does not invalidate the OLS results whatsoever. And that's all there is for the normality tests in eViews and the interpretation of their results. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you'd like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're interested in supporting on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.